Yes. Okay. Sometimes when you are collecting a brother or a sister, the first thing he will tell you that your church is not only the church. But thank God for this uh, question that you have answered. It has given us an opportunity to know, for me, to know that the church is one. So when I am collecting a brother, or when a brother is collecting me, I will know that he is doing a nice job in order for me to be saved. So therefore, instead of me refusing or rejecting to obey him in order to go to another church, I have to discipline myself in order to obey him, in order to save my souls. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very good contribution. The correction we receive is in love. It's for your salvation. Yes, another person. Praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. I learned something from this excommunication. Because at times, when somebody was disciplined, in this case an excommunicate, we, for example, myself, I'll be thinking that, ha, ah, this person that is so serious, working for the Lord, how can this thing be? Why not having mercy? But because we are ignorant of the deep sin that can spread, now this thing was explained. Now it, for myself, when such thing happened, I will not, instead I will pray for that person, I will not go and show him that person as if they are deceiving or they did him wrong because myself, I don't know the deep thing that it will happen. So I learned a lot from that. Praise the Lord. Can we give a clap offering to God for our sister what she has learned? Amen. Because sometimes the church is taking action over somebody. And you just come up to be supporting the person, sympathizing with the person. And you don't know the danger of what you're doing. God, through Moses, judged Korah, Dotan, and Abiram, and the 250 people. For Korah, Dotan, and Abiram, their family and all, they ate open its mouth. And these people descended alive to hell what did the children of israel do they went well against moses you have destroyed the lost people uh -uh. did moses have the power to open the ground it is satan that came again to walk on those people so be very careful satan walked on daughter Korah and abiram to cause problem in the assembly God judged them. Satan went into church members now, the congregation, to see what God has done as evil. They are not ready to know the detail. They were not there when Moses called Dotan and Abiram and they say, We will not come. They didn't hear the detail when Dotan and Abiram Korah raised up 250 men and polluted them. To, you didn't hear them saying, let us go back to Egypt. And was thinking to raise up someone that would take them to Egypt. They didn't hear when Dota, Koran, and Abiram came up to say the promise of God is a lie. Even God is a liar. They didn't hear this. It's as judgment came, they started supporting Korah, Dota, and Abiram. What did God do to them? Another judgment of fire. Another judgment of fire went wild against them. They started dying. It is offering that Moses and Aaron offered that pleaded with God to stop killing them. So don't carry yourself into death by interfering in matters you are not aware. Is that clear? Investigate that matter from the beginning to the end. Maybe this message you had yesterday about a message from hell. He said, ah, who could be this woman? They have done this woman evil. They have done this woman evil. 
They have spread news about her. Are you in your senses that she has sent somebody to hell now and the person is inside fire? Who has really been done evil? Is it the living or the dead? You are not considering how many she's still sending there. Yours is to support it. No, they wouldn't have done like that. Be careful. You will be judged yourself as children of the devil. Thank you, my sister. You have shared well. Praise the Lord. Uh, I learned uh, different things from the answer you gave to us. Amen. Uh, initially, just touching on what my sister answered. In our church, there is this our brother. The church gave a back seat. And uh, myself, even, being as a, even as a pastor, I was kicking against it. Why? Because this brother is very zealous. To me, I felt this brother is well needed. Amen. Then, I was seeing it in Ango that the brother should have just been rebuked and, uh, you know, and bring back, not just being a spell. Amen. But according to the message and the explanation, I've been able to understand there are some mistakes a sister or a brother will commit in the church that will just warrant something like backseat, a little punishment. There are some that deserve a spelling. Amen. I've learned that. Then another point I learned something is the uh, area of a new member coming into a church. As a pastor, you know, mostly we begin to rejoice. We will never further to inquire that person's life. Amen. We will just be happy. Maybe, probably God has been answering our prayers. People are now trooping in. We don't even want to know the kind of life that person is living. We are not even interested to know what makes that person to leave his uh, former church to join this one. Some of them might have been expelled and they're coming here and you welcome them and probably they are this blah blah brethren and all that. You just firstly you will give them another post and they will begin to rejoice. We are back again. So, so I learned that we should always try to know the person that have newly joined whom that person is, the kind of life that person is living, at least to help out. May God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. Lay hands suddenly on no man. You see a man just come, say, ah, this is the man I want to marry. In fact, it's answer to my prayers. The man is on transfer to Anambra State. He left his family in Sokoto. You are seeing him here and say, this is the one you have been praying for. You don't know the details. So, be very careful. Yes, another person. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Actually, uh, I'm the person that was being told that uh, the skirt I was wearing is not good. And that day, I noticed that it is not I've been wearing, I never knew. I thank God for that. Again, a brother came to our church. He saw the banner of Orimo. And we, in our church, not everyone is a member, are members of Orimo. But God just spotted me out that day. So many people were wearing maybe her tie, shoes with toes and beads and all these sequins. The brother just came to me and said, Sister, this dress you are wearing, though, the hand is a little bit transparent. And he went to my last bone and said, ah, Why did you plate your hair with a shiny thread? And I was happy in my mind and rejoicing. I said, God, among all the peop people that are in this church, you just decided to visit me and my family. At the upper Sunday, I gave testimony and I was thanking God. Then again, I have learned that we should not exalt any man of God above God. If you see any error, you can go to that person and tell him, look at this thing that I have noticed. You know, somebody came to the church one day. He said the Holy Ghost led him to tell the church to give one one thousand as a seed, and we all complied. He came another day. He repeated such a thing. I was just hoping at him, and I didn't consent to it. And later, I went to the man of God. I said, "Are you seeing error? 
The other time he said it was Holy Ghost that spoke to him. Now, who has spoken to him? And he's repeating such a... And the man of God saw with me. I said, it's true. Oh, this thing is true. I'm taking precaution. Praise the Lord. And I thank God for that. Thirdly, you know, I saw a woman who was once a member of Horimo with a child, female child with an attachment. I said, ah, sister, though you are no longer coming to Horimo, you know that this thing is not good. He said, I should leave that thing. When she was in Horimo, they were complicating issues. <laughs> they said that uh, we should not use any attachments on our head. Uh, later, they said this, uh, uh, this old uh, thread. And uh, all these things, they are attachments. I was trying to convince her. If they say something and later God spoke to them, look at this thing, we are supposed to do it like this. It doesn't mean that they are complicating the issue. He said, no, they said we should not put on tight. Later, they said that tight is not a sin. I tried all possible best to convince her. She didn't accept it. Again, I even among us. Sometimes you see someone doing something that is not good. You try to approach that person in meekness and say, ah, the person will begin to tell you, no, no, this and that. Give me flimsy reasons why she is doing it. That, that is not everything that they say that you just have said. This thing, how can this thing be a sin? Now you imagine it too. So it is not good. Whenever we are being told that this thing is not good, let us take correction. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want you to know this sister. What's your name, my sister? Testimony. Oh, your life is a testimony. Amen. You who are far there at the back, are you really attentive here? You, you couldn't see her. She was the one I spoke with all this while. Uh, we stopped the, the message running so I could take this question and answer. I mean, so I could talk with you now. She was the one. Is the one I was talking about South African apartheid. The skate that looks scattered. Now, some people might be sitting down there and say, look at this pastor embarrassing this person. Are you hearing me? Look at the pastor embarrassing this person. These people are proud. They just want to make nonsense of people. See the woman. Is she embarrassed? Is she embarrassed? That's the problem. It is you that are causing problem to yourself. By the way you think it. It has become to her glory. Now the Lord used her case to teach the whole world righteousness. And she will be rewarded for that. Is that okay? She will be rewarded for that. The Lord used her case. And she is not offended at all. At another time, if I understood her well, somebody came to her and talked about, you are using shining thread. Is that what you say? Oh, your daughter. Thank God. You and your children are for signs and wonders today. Praise the Lord. Someone came to her daughter and said, no, this thread you are using, shining thread, is bad. Was there any problem? See the way she interpreted it. Thank God. Among all the people, it's me the Lord found to perfect. It's my family the Lord has found to perfect. Praise the name of the Lord. This is the way you should think. The reason why you get angry at correction, get angry at some actions on you, is the way you are thinking. You think badly. That's why it gives you anger. She has the right to leave holiness revival movement from that day. Does he not have reason? What happened? Leave that place where the international director is embarrassing people all about. God cannot allow that embarrassment. But she has overcome it. Learn to overcome Satan in your life. So that these little, little things will not throw you off balance. We appreciate God for her. Bless her before God. Tell her you are blessed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, another person. Praise the Lord. Uh, I want to talk about the, 
the side of correcting you in your dressing. I learned a good thing from it. So when I newly joined Horemo, so there was a time it was, I cannot forget that day, it was a combined service. I came with my, all these skirts that time that we used to wear and walk up and down. Mommy just, go, be like, say, God, just put her for that door. She just blocked me there and said, come, come, my daughter. This skirt is not good. And me, if it's in another church, you tell me this kind of thing. Ah, I feel no come there again. But the way my heart was, was not even like angry. She said, go and wear that cloth that you just saw. Because that time, she helped me to sew one cloth that time, I think so. Yeah, she said she go and wear But I don't want people to see that. Me, I'm wearing only one, one clothes. That was why I wanted to just change that skirt. Maybe for a time, I'll change the other one before I can get another one. In the sun that day, I was see myself going back home to go and change clothes and to come back. So I just thank God that because some people, when you correct them, now while I'll be that, they will find problems. It will hurt them in their hearts. They will see it like it's embarrassment. So that's why some people say, even in the house of God, I will not talk to them because I see the way they respond to somebody that corrected them the other day. I will just keep quiet. But today, I will do the work of God in Jesus' name. Just count yourself that you are nobody. So whatever somebody is saying, whether he's abusing you, you are abusing nobody. <laughs> because my name is nobody. And maybe somebody came and saw a woman abusing you. Uh, who why, who is that woman abusing? Why is the answer? Why is the answer? Nobody. So, nobody. So, is there going to be any reaction? No. Be dead to yourself. Say what you want to say. David said, allow him to curse. Even if he's speaking evil. Train yourself to bear all things. Charity. Bear it all things. Yes, another person. Give to my coordinators now. It's time for them to speak. What did they learn? Start there. Yes. What did you learn? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The one that stick to my heart is that one when somebody is facing discipline you, because of is a, your relation or your friend, you carry yourself into the matter without knowing the fullness of the details. That is sticking to my heart. That one should learn how to allow God to have his way, not to interfere in the word of God. Because in the process of helping the person, you are sending the person to her fire. Praise God. Give to Barrister Martins. I want you people to be alive. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will allow women talk, women talk, women talk. Men are not talking. What is happening to men actually? You are just killing the church like this. The revelation the Lord gave is, Jesus came to the camp and said, Do you know where witches and wizards have taken over everything? My true children don't do it. Ask who will do this. They will draw themselves. And these people take over. Add it to the commission of holiness revival movement. Tell them that I say, the Lord save you for zealous work. Zealous in the house of God. Why are you not zealous? You sit down. Mighty men here sitting down. Are you mighty in the presence of God in heaven? Why don't you behave like a child? Humble yourself like a child so that others should gain from you. It's to your profit. See how these women have spoken. It's to their profit. Don't be sitting idle. Be active. Speak. You are speaking for Jesus. Yes, my brother. Praise the Lord. I learned from the, the answer given that we should not help God. Because if somebody is disciplined by God in the house of God, for you now to begin to take sight or begin to have pity on the person that is disciplined. You, are you helping God? God has used the leader to discipline him. 
and you are now challenging what God has said thinking that it is the leader that have made that mistake so we should not help God any decision taken by the leader should be considered and should be supported rather we should pray for those that are disciplined that God will help them to understand the reason of the discipline and not to go back and not to leave the church they should endure till when the time of the discipline is over praise the Lord uh, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 13 I read from verse 6 to verse 11 it says if thy brother the son of thy mother or thy son or thy daughter or the wife of thy bosom or thy friend which is as thine own soul entice thee secretly saying let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known thou nor thy fathers namely of the gods of the people which are round about you near unto you or far off from you from the one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth let's read verse 8 and 9 together as a chorus verse 8 and 9 1 to go thou shalt not consent unto him nor hearken unto him neither shall thine eye pity him neither shall thou spear neither shall thou conceal him but thou shalt surely kill him thy hand shall be fixed upon him to put him to death and afterwards the hand of the other people and thou shalt stone him with stones that he die because he had thought to trust thee away from the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage let's read verse 11 loudly and all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more such wickedness among you as this is done among you can you see don't pity person don't pity a man that is a sinner the effect of that man over your eternal life is very terrible you may not even go to heaven again because of him a driver is always sleeping in the steering and that driver is your friend and you want to go to Abuja for conference and the people say no we will not take this driver because he has always been sleeping on the steering that is how he slept off one other time like that the heart accident that's how he slept off the other time but he say uh, uh, let's forgive him he's our brother <laughs> it's your brother it should make you leave this world because it's your brother it should make you die because it's your brother how many of you will pardon him and say, let's go to Abuja, he is my brother? Nobody? Just imagine the revelation of yesterday. See this man. One, the woman has lost her husband forever. There is no possibility of seeing her husband again forever. Two, the man died untimely death. Three, there was all truth around the man. He struggled to get the truth, but devil blocked it. Devil used a woman to block it. Are you hearing me? Three, this man was made to be associated with a backsliding preacher. And the backsliding preacher 
put anger into his heart that he hated the righteous now this man has died and he's mourning and said my wife is in danger now oh more than that satan brought four demons and they broke all his bones and carried him like this to hell and put him in a room with sulfur and brimstone and said this will be your place forever and ever whom are you going to pity are you going to pity the living who did this and is still doing so to others only we have not got the story yet or we are going to pity the dead oh you have gone oh she deprived you the privilege of life whom will you pity what will you do now to this the one that is still living and has not repented instead of repenting eh, i don't know what uh, eh, 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 eh. I, who I, what are you going to do with the living that is ready is not repentant oh satan did this thing to me rather is looking for stories what will you do the bible says your eyes shall not pity take action and the action says excommunication get him out of the assembly of god get him or get her out of the heavenly business they are not ready for heaven and they are cautioning those who want to go there not to go so that is how it is your eye shall not pity when the church is taking judgment over a person you don't know what evil that person has done it's only when the church is doing wickedness you will know that this is wickedness but check through scriptures a righteous church will do everything according to scriptures without respect of person amen bring it to our brother here praise the lord i learned from the question that a junior pastor should not take up discipline without consulting the senior pastor Okay, the issue of first communication. Yes. Okay, okay. Because uh, he may not have the wisdom to handle the exactly, situation. Exactly, exactly. So he should refer to the senior pastor who will examine very well. And I will know the level of judgment that will be given to the person. Whether he is to leave the, the place or to stay and be coming and not to hold office. I think I learned that one. Because before we used to put a black shear when we were in the Pentecostal move. They would put a black shear at the, the back. Whether small church or big church, the black shear will be there. Any small thing, they suspend you and tell you to go and sit there. And sometimes, the junior people in the church will say what the person has done is not enough for him to sit there. So it is good to refer matters to senior pastor who will also verify very well and know the level of judgment that will be given to the offender. Also, I am also encouraged with the life of our sister who said I am the one the problem sometimes is that which our sister this our sister that said she was the one that was corrected i think at in i think at yeah yeah yes yeah. so that's the problem that many of our holy more members are having i think in calabar i want to use this to illustrate there's this sister that went with us to abuja and she will wear this tight dress that will bring out her breasts I called her, I said, you have stayed up to four months in Holy Mall. 
begin to change their clothes. So she came to the prayer meeting one day, wearing the same clothes I've worn her. So I said, go home and change and come to prayer meeting. You know what she did? She started crying there. <laughs> she walked small at the entrance of the church and started crying there. Members of our fellowship gathered there. And the other one said, I can't stand tears. This thing a coordinator has done. So when they came back, I asked them, why do you go and stand with the person? Because sometimes when you discipline somebody or even tell somebody what to do, when they see tears, they begin to sympathize with the sinner. After I called them, they came to apologize. They said, I am sorry. This one said, I am sorry. You know, that girl is not coming to church again. Because sometimes they are coming to look for husband. And when they don't see the husband, they will leave. And spoil those who are around. Exactly. So, we, the leaders, should not be afraid to rebuke them or to call them to correct them. By God's grace, even in Hurimo, anywhere I go, once I see you, I will talk to you. And some of our sisters here too. And also we, the coordinators, should be willing to tell the people to face. Change your cloth. Say, for instance, you wear cloth and you want to say, Daddy, your breast is all sick. And you are told you become angry. Why are you getting angry? The Lord will help us and give us boldness to actually stand firm and tell our sisters. Our brother has a problem too, but the one of sisters are much. So we'll be able to correct our sisters to change their government gradually as they grow in more. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bring it to the only child pastor. Praise the Lord. Uh, I learned from the the answer to the question that the purpose of discipline is for correction and perfection. So the purpose of discipline is for correction and perfection. It depends on how one handles discipline. I notice that the way you handle discipline, when you are disciplined, determines your eternal life or your destruction. Because if you handle it righteously, it will end you eternal life. But if you go about grumbling, complaining, murmuring, speaking all evil words, it will land the person to destruction. What God, God made in heart for the discipline is to correct us and put us right. Because any son the father loves, he chastens. And the purpose of chastening is for to me to, to shape you and give you right direction. So that's what I learned from the answer. Amen. Uh, brother, the boy. Praise the Lord. I want to say that discipline should be seen not as an instrument of destruction, but as an instrument of correction and restoration. I recall some years ago, in a certain assembly, a young lady was involved in an act of fornication. And when the matter was investigated and discipline was pronounced, some members of the church took sides with her and began to uh, make noise and insult the pastor openly. And the pastor from the altar pronounced discipline on such people. Later, the young lady came to her senses, came to the church, accepted that she was guilty, and took up that discipline. While those that were supporting her didn't bother to do that. In fact, I recall that one of them that was so vociferous in defending her, later, not quite long after that, died. And uh, before he died, we made an attempt to make him serious him by explaining to him, but he never accepted that. The church I'm talking about is an Assemblies of God. This thing happened in Assemblies of God. 
young man died. But that girl came to her senses and reconciled with the church and with God, served the discipline and was called back. So this place should be seen the way it is, the way the Bible made it. And so I told this story so that we should be very careful when discipline is being pronounced. That you don't go to strengthen the hand of the wicked against God. Rather, we should let the wicked know that he should humble himself and repair from his sins. Praise the Lord. Give it to Brother Andy in the media. Stand up. What did you gain in this message? You have been working on the message yourself. <laughs> Amen. The question and answers that yes. we just finished now. I learned that um, if a person is disciplined or a person is uh, excommunicated from the assembly of the children of God, what he did is sin against the body of Christ. It's not a sin against the church. So it's a sin against the body of Christ. Uh, in some uh, assembly, such kind of people would jump from one congregation to, to the other one, and uh, that congregation is going to accept him and maybe console him, uh, accusing the other congregation of wickedness against the brother. And uh, in such, they will accept him maybe because of his uh, uh, fat uh, offering, or maybe he's a rich person, so they will accept him. And, uh, and everything continues. But that excommunication, when a brother is excommunicated, he has been thrown to the devil. So that if the devil as in, will uh, buffet him, he, for him running back, he's running back to Christ. Not for him to see as if he's living in another congregation, I'm going to wear... Um, as in uh, another body of Christ uh, uh, are going to accept me, then I've been forgiven. No, it is not like that. The so punishment is universal. Give Amen. to Mama Linda. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Actually, I was sitting behind and I want to contribute concerning our sister dressing. Um, I was feeling sleepy as I was sitting there, so I decided to go around. And by the grace of God, maybe it's, the, it's God that was making me to feel sleepy or I was walking about. I want to let our sisters in Onisha know that we have decided to follow Jesus, not for anybody. You want to make heaven. And the Lord has been telling us that we should all be selfish Christians. Not only for yourself. Think about others. As I've been watching some of you, even since we came the first day, I was planning to talk to the coordinator wife that it's like you have to sit one in one with your women. The dressing I'm seeing in Onisha is not standard. And if you people continue like this, you'll be surprised during rapture, many of our men here, they will not make it. And some of you will be crying, why, why me? You know, I want you people to know that the Igbos, you are blessed with the behind. God really bless you people, you are, you are fat. When you notice like that, you know you have a big shape. Or you are fat. Or you are slim. Be careful the kind of cloth you are wearing. Our sister was saying that she have learned. I was trying to say, yes, my sister, please, can you stand up, please? I'm sorry. She has really learned that her cloth, she's not supposed to wear a short skirt, but this one is very good, it's long as well, but it's very tight. Come, sister, come. Don't worry, come, come. You know, we use our life to save others. As me, I'm testimony. When I start talking about my past life, I don't, I'm not ashamed of anything because I'm doing it to the glory of God so that others will repent. Some of you, when they correct you, we became angry. You should be happy that they are even calling you so that you can make an example for others to learn. A cloth is very nice, it's long, but it's tight. Tone. It's very tight. Showing a little shape. 
When she's walking innocently, she will not know. But there are men that will stumble after her. There's another sister, sister stand up with a yellow attire. You that have the baby. Yes. That kind of hand, is it not the normal hand we used to wear in our dress? When you are not giving your life to Christ, that sleeve is not the correct sleeve. Don't wear that kind of sleeve. Because you will just say it's, it's normal thing. There are some people that will lost after that your muscle. We have to be careful how we dress. Hallelujah. We have to be careful. So, please. I was seeing another sister. I'm looking for her now. She was standing outside taking fresh air. I wanted to call somebody. Is she a new member or old member? The skirt is here. Even she, she wear black skirt. She was drawing the skirt as she was standing outside the door. Why are you drawing it? You know that the t-shirts. These are dresses that we are children of God. We should come out of it. If you don't have dress, tell the Lord, Lord, I want to change. Don't manage. There is no manager because you will damage people. You don't have Come to the leader. Please, I've checked my cloth. They are tight. They are this. Don't manage. Don't be ashamed. Write to people. Women, please contribute. Help others. But this kind of dressing, you that are fat behind, make sure when you are sewing your gown, let it be flay. So at least, if you are inside it, like me now, see this, my cloth is doing like this. It's not easy for you to see my shape. You hear? You are not doing it for yourself. You are doing it to save others. Like our uh, sister sitting here. Sister Lydia, stand up. I was admiring her. Her cloth is standard. She's looking all at, you see the blouse. Go down to cover her tummy and whatever come down. Make sure you tell the tell her, I'm, dear, I'm not dressing to seduce. I'm not dressing to follow fashion. I am dressing to make others not to stumble. I don't want my clothes to do any seductive business. We are not only covering our legs, covering our hands. We are dressing so that others will not lose after us. There are some clothes you cover everywhere, but they are still, your shape is showing somebody will lose after. Is it not so? The cloth is covered, but because it's tight, this stretch cloth, like this, our sister that climbed up the pulpit yesterday to talk with me. The dress is not good. It's a stretch. When you know you are fat, avoid all those stretch clothes that will just hug your body. There are men around. When you take around, you see the men, they dress very well, long sleeve, the brothers. But why we, the women, we are still having short sleeve up to our elbow. And the neck is still open. When you bend down, you see the bust is very tight. Please, I'm begging you because I know you have gone far. Let little dressing do not affect you. Perfect your dressing. You are not only dressing to cover don't allow somebody to stumble. You that God have blessed behind, when you are walking, notice that the way your, your buttock is playing. So look for something that we cover. They are printed skirts. Other decent sewing way. Don't sew too much fitting on your body. We talk about it in December. I know that many Onisha women did not go because many said that our daddy they are coming. So some of you, we are not in a women conference. Try to get the CDs. I was displaying some dressing so that you will perfect yourself and will make heaven together in Jesus name Amen. Amen. Yeah. praise the Lord I still want to thank God for the standard of the movement I know in our church's past this occasion is not giving where people are free to ask questions and to answer questions and more also to think about how we should dress it has been like can i say fashion parade they look at the pastor's wife the latest uh, dress women will be dying for that so look at the newscasters they get a fashion pattern. They'll be sewing those things, bringing them to the church. And pastor will not rebuke anybody. But thank God in this place, we are seeing all these things live. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Then like the issue of discipline, I also realize that if truly churches are together, when somebody is disciplined in this church, I think other churches should be able to understand that this place is under discipline. But rather, that church will absorb the person. 
And if he's an honorary member, they can make him a deacon. Or if he's something else, maybe I've been a Sunday school teacher, within a few months they can make him a pastor. And he's on that discipline somewhere. So, but with this now, our eyes is getting open. That if you see such a thing happen somewhere, and maybe someone is disciplined here, no, it's a universal discipline. Not just for more, but universal discipline, the body of Christ. So that if you see such people, you'll be able to save the life of others. To tell them, say, brother, you have been under discipline. You are not supposed to take position in this church. Go back to your church or go back to where you come from and repent. So I believe with this exercise, it will help us. Thank God we have been mandated to go with the CDs and play it in our chapters and also in our unit. But I just want to appeal to us that we should buy the same, these CDs, question and answer, send it to pastors and appealing to you. Buy it, send it to pastors. Let them listen to those CDs. And I tell you, it's going to do more work in the church and also in our hearts. And I want to thank the international director for that. God bless you, sir. Um, while we say this, we must also have a kind of a higher understanding that one, the discipline inflicted on a believer from another church because he is aspiring greater things of God. Because he attended the fellowship of believers. He, he has hunger and taste for righteousness. And maybe for a program like this, he decided to come here. And the church declared discipline on him. Those are null and void. Is that okay? Those type of disciplines are null and void. They have no effect. Neither before God. Nor before the true church. Because it is out of the ignorance. Rebellion. And selfishness of that congregation. Two. He might be coming from. A church and maybe he really committed immorality from that church why did he commit immorality he has not been hearing the word of God the truth is not there so he ran to where he will find the world we may not say go back to your church remember he is coming to where he will find salvation yet we will uphold that discipline on him because the discipline was done in the spirit of truth and righteousness. We would rather be the one to supervise the discipline and then release him when we know he is okay. That means, therefore, you will need to report yourself about your spiritual history. When you come in among us, we want to know how was your yesterday? How did you live your life? Did you carry any such things? Remember the church of God is one. Explain them clearly and in detail. In the new Christian environment, you'll find yourself. If a person has been in a hospital and he wants to go over to another hospital, what does he carry along with him? Medical report. Because since the treatment has started somewhere, we want to know the effort made in that place so carry your medical report so let us know if you have, have any problem that actually angered god you sinned against god don't think changing church is changing the matter you fought with somebody everybody knew it was wrong and they declared you on discipline you left the place and changed church remember in your record the record is still there that you fought is that not so? Explain your case so we can teach you how to clean yourself. It might require going back to the church you came from to do restitution, to appease to people. Thank you so much.
Praise the Lord. Uh, I want to thank God for the question and answer. I discovered that the lifestyle or rather the holiness of the life of a believer or a worker is more important to God than the services he's going to render. He values our lifestyle. Then when your life is in order, your services will become meaningful. So we should not struggle. This one is doing service or this and that. How is his uh, life? That is what should be more important. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to give three people to ask fresh questions. And then we'll close because of coming back in the evening. Yes, one person. I'm happy you people are raising up hands. Zealous. Be zealous for Jesus. Eh? Are you hearing? Everybody say, I will be zealous for Jesus. I will be zealous for Jesus. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I have some two questions to ask. And I'm happy the opportunity has come. Romans chapter 13 from verse 1 to 7. The two questions will be coming from there. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Without them not be afraid of the power, do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for the beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath. Upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute also. For they that are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom custom fear to whom fear honor to whom honor sorry extend it to verse 8 oh no man anything but to love one another for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law so from this place we read sir i want further clarification on how we should do in paying our taxes as believers paying dues to government as we should Ex example many of us are doing some businesses our men our women are doing some businesses that is just buy and sell here buy and sell there and so many of us are not civil servants who collect salaries and maybe they can be taxed before they collect their overall their their pay uh, and also, uh, there are other levies that are paid, especially we know the cases in our states, Anambra in particular, where you pay store levy, you pay for ANSEPA, you pay this, you pay that, you pay that. So, how should we Christians, and to what extent should we be involved? To ensure we are not violating the word of God. That's my number one question. Uh, number two, the Bible says, Oh no man anything except to love. I'm talking about the area of debt, owing. Some of us are owing, myself in particular, I am owing some people. So, and uh, the much I have learned from Horemore 
I meet those people again and again and I appeal to them, please, exercise patience with me. I have not gotten the money to pay you. But I will pay you. God knows that I don't have the intention to eat your money. So, now, sir, I would want to, to, that you shed more light in this respect. Thank you, sir. It's okay. The government of every nation has the rules guiding the nation. They have rules guiding taxation, which every businessman should study and comply with. In the church setting, our government does not uh, charge the church to pay tax. Uh, ministers of the gospel who are doing the work of God are not paying tax. As to how it operates outside the church, well, I am not knowledgeable about that. But every person look for the truth and do it. One thing we must avoid is telling lies to the government. Maybe there are some things the government may say. If you have this, if you have this, if you have that, it will help to reduce your tax. Then you begin to tell lies. I have this, I have this, I have this, I have that. That's lie. Your tax is reduced, but you're not a Christian going to heaven. We must also be very careful that we should not be deceived in our heart that why should the government claim too much from us in tax payment? Did you get so much? Give the government what he's looking for. For we have not come to the earth to be rich. God is not asking for riches on earth to qualify us for heaven. He is asking for righteousness. Therefore, don't use your carnal wisdom to reduce your tax. Just as the Bible says, diverse weight and diverse measures are bought abomination before the Lord. There are people that beat up the major. They used to major things in the market. They will feel that thing, that major, but they have beat up the bottom. That is a lie. You have deceived people. This is what the people in the world are doing. Don't do it. Tell the truth. The fact that human beings may not want the truth doesn't mean you won't tell it again. Tell the truth in your business. You don't need to be telling the lies. I bought this thing for uh, 5,000. Just because you want to sell it for um, 7,000. And you bought that thing for 2,500. Why all these lies? The love of money is the root of all evil. While some, having coveted after, have pierced themselves with many diverse laws that leads to destruction and many sorrows. So, be very careful to, with your life. Be very careful on matters of money. Do justice as before the Lord. In the book of Titus chapter 3, Titus chapter 3 from verse 1. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. So put them in mind to submit to the government, submit to the rules of the government, that is what God expects of you. Please, don't look for too much money. Having food and raiment, let us be there with satisfied. And this same spirit is applied by unfaithful, incomplete Christians in the church. When they have the, their business blossom and they make a million to think of taking 100,000 from that 
to God is too much. Ah uh ah. -uh. If I carry twenty thousand, is not a small. Is it a small thing? Is there anybody in that church that is giving twenty thousand? Are you giving it to the church or to the God of the church? You are satisfied with the members in that church, but God wants more. And money is required to bring in more members. Because more money is required for evangelism. But these people cannot bear of paying much tithes from the much income. Listen, one million naira, you have 100,000 out of it. How many? How much? You mean 900,000? thousand is not enough for you you are not a reasonable person you are not reasonable you are really not worthy for heaven money is occupying the space in you that god should occupy so in the same way some deal with the government like that ah maybe the government will charge you from one million maybe the government will charge you fifty thousand ah no 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 I, I, I cannot. You begin to follow the way of the world to reduce taxation. You're hurting yourself. The people of the world are telling lies to accumulate. You say you have left lies. You say you have left evil. You have left this. Why are you not doing the complete thing so you can have the reward? So, obey the government. Look for the rules of the government and let it apply to your life. Amen? Amen. When we say obey the government, we know as believers, there are some things the government say that we will not do. Those things that contradict our God, that contradict the ways of God, the laws of God, we will tell the government, God first. We will obey God rather than government. Ah, don't preach. Ah, uh ah, -uh, we will preach. But we will apply wisdom so that the people should not corner us and silence our words, our opportunity to preach. We will still use all wisdom. That's how some people were able to smuggle the Bible to where the Bible was banned. They were able to still go there. And yet they were guiltless because those laws are not in righteousness. So that is how we should also understand it. Oh, no man anything does not mean you may not borrow if you borrow your owing but it is saying don't in wickedness keep any man's property in your hand but to love one another which means to owe someone anything you are depriving the law of love you are opposed to the law of love then what type of owing it is that which you are using your carnal wisdom, carnal powers to keep. You have gotten money from someone. You owe. Why not pay back the man? You have the money. You have gotten money to pay. It's your wicked heart that doesn't want to pay. Come. When you went to that man to borrow, it was not love the man exercised to give you he exercised love. Oh, is that your problem, my brother? Okay, then you can take this. Yes, when you have it, you can bring. Now it is your time to really demonstrate this love. Pay him back in his love and say, Brother, I'm so grateful. That thing which you borrowed me, I can now pay back. Take it. Will he not be happy? He will be happy. But you forgot, you refused. No, I won't give him now. Wickedness has come into it. You have no excuse before God. The Bible says, the wicked borrow it and pay it not again. It's not that borrowing is wicked. No. The wicked borrow it and pay it not again. So, not, what makes him wicked? Pay it not again. That is why the wickedness comes into it. Pay it not again. It's not that he does not have the money to pay and is pleading like a man that came fell before his master i said oh have patience with me i will repay i don't have now it's different from that man this one has he doesn't want to pay wickedness he will not make it to heaven is that okay 
Yes. Praise the Lord. Sir, before my question, <laughs> uh, what I, I want to say, what I learned from the questions and answer. I learned that when we go for evangelism, we should preach salvation first. Uh, because, some, uh, because if we start with removing earring and we've won, people might be angry. So we should be wise when evangelizing to people, not to start with uh, telling them by removing earring and uh, you didn't learn that one here okay. because we said the holy hmm. spirit should tell you what to do because some of these people you are going for evangelism are already church people in fact some are even born again it's only ignorance that is in them they are still hanging the earrings they are still hanging this so as the lord shall lead you mm -hmm. tell them what the lord leads you to say when the rich man came to Jesus, he went straight to tell him as the spirit led him. Although the, he lost the rich man, it was not because he didn't have the right approach. That's what we said. Another one, I was discouraged. When you correct people, they will not be happy. So I decided to stop correcting them. But at the we where you answered someone, I learned that I will continue to correct people. That if I don't correct, I will go to hell with that person that is doing the wrong thing. So, another question now is... Now, for that to pray that God will give you the wisdom and the boldness of pastor. Because they are mixed together. If I do that, I know also how to heal the matter. Is that clear? Yes. And I know the approach I am using. So, make sure you do it in love, in gentleness and in wisdom more grace for you amen yes the next person praise god that day I, I thank god because my question is coming from uh, mommy's revelation yesterday concerning mother and the lord Dan. so this thing is bothering my heart since but i wanted to go to our coordinator but because of this program i said let me ask so I know that in Horomon and the other places there are bad seeds. Seed are bad. I'm not saying that there's no winch, but there's a prayer point mommy gave us yesterday that sister, ask God concerning your friend or anybody that you trust. Maybe they are strong, that person is wrong. You know, it's a cue. And they want us to pray such a prayer in order to bring holiness into ourselves. But what I'm observing is that in this Anambra State, Koromon, they are more suspicious than a revelation of God. You know, now, as I'm standing here, I'm not free as a sister that you brought something and with her feeling, say, sister, eat this. He say, no. It's not that you don't want to eat, but you don't know whether you are a witch or this or this. Daddy, please. Tell us more things concerning that situation because suspicious is carrying away uh, God revealing you to you. I'm praying yesterday night I was burdened. I enter into my bed. I say, God, reveal myself. If I'm a witch, let this holiness revival movement in this uh, um, chapter I am or nature reveal to me so that this witch spirit will be killed. Because you are not free with your sister. Uh, and that yesterday I meant to say, hey, hey, hey. yes. This person who is doing like this, maybe winch, maybe winch, you know. Please, daddy, advise us, especially women. Praise God. Well, uh, what I will recommend is more righteousness, more prayer, more truth, more presence of God among you. Because even these people suspecting or spreading, oh, this one is a witch. They are also witches. You get it? There are many of them. They are also in that thing. And they do that also to create fear. It's still another instrument of Satan. This brother who died, when it was after death, he is now saying, Oh, I saw the witch, these people. This man is against this. This one was against this. This one was against this. They were telling, Be careful. Ah, that one is a witch. 
I went there, the Lord told me that you all those people are choosing themselves are witches, all of them. It's a systematic play. It is when you go to the depth do you discover that they are lawyers in the court after the court they go and play with them say bro how, ah you know that's your case you know you are you are chasing me like this ah, they go and play with themselves he said they are all united so let's not go about in the witchcraft business until the lord tells us let's just do our prayers do our righteousness do our holiness will we'll enjoy the peace of God. All the, the spirit of suspicion will vanish from among us. Is that okay? Serve the Lord. Okay, you, the man there. Praise the Lord. Sir, I, uh, I've heard you said something about if a backslider returns to the Lord, he should do his restitution, proper restitution. Okay. He should do his proper restitution. So, I backslided five years, three days. Like today is precisely two months and a day. So I want to know what kind of restitution I will do. Maybe is it open restitution to the church or I don't know. You will know. Just sit down, don't bother yourself. As you keep on hearing the word, the restitutions of your life will be showing up by themselves. No, I mean to the church. I know I know already outside. I mean to even the, the ones to the church. Don't go and force restitution upon yourself. Okay. As you continue to hear the word, the Holy Spirit will tell you if anything you need to settle with the church. If there's anything like that. If it doesn't if it doesn't tell you, don't force one. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon, sir. I really thank God for this opportunity to entertain, um, entertain our question because this question is bothering me at times. I don't know how to go about it, the institution. Um, I have a sister and I went there with her in Cameroon. I lived there with her. So I said that. I will not allow her to, to take away my salvation because she is living a careless life, though she was married. But I said, no, I will not follow her to live that kind of life. And she said, I must go back to Nigeria because two captains cannot be in the same boat. I said, it's okay, I will go. Then, on that day, she prepared everything. Right, go, um, one of his servants, serving under her, he stole money and go and buy a wash for me to send me back to say goodbye for me. That I should not go and tell her, madam. So I, I say, okay, I will not tell her. I tell that um, wash. But since I've returned, since I've heard the word of God about restitution, the Lord is keep telling me that I should confess, I should make, make it up. I mean, I, I'm afraid because I don't want to tell it now. So that my sister will say that they will not settle the boy again. Because the boy is still under them. Is the boy your, boy, your boyfriend? Eh? No, it's not my boyfriend. How did he say bye-bye watch for you? Um, he bought the watch to send me. That is to say goodbye. Is it with his money or with your sister's money? With my sister's money. How do you know? I don't know because as a servant, he don't, he don't supposed to have his own money. Who told you? <laughs> Did he tell you it was your sister's money he used? Or he just bought watch and gave you in love and you are now thinking it is your sister's he money. He did not tell me anything. He just give me the watch and tell me I should not make them to know. I don't think you need to bother yourself. Because he didn't tell you this watch. I stole your sister's money to get it for you. The boy has many other ways to get money of his own. And he can tell you, don't tell your sister because your sister will suspect that the money came from her own business. I may not come from there. So if the boy gave you the watch in righteousness, it's not for immorality on your life, be peaceful in your life. 
and don't force restitution upon yourself. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Thank yes. you. Yes, our brother there. Uh, yes, sir. I have some uh, areas I need clarification on pertaining to uh, marital restitution. Um, if you've uh, uh, made restitution and you've told the person you are no longer married to her, must you still go back to her family and inform them you are no longer married to their daughter? So I'm, I'm, I'm confused in that area. And then, secondly, if, like you have a building, you have your own home, you have your own house, and then you get out of the house for a time, and as time went on, you find out you cannot pay for a flat or whatever. Then you go back to that your house and take just one room there. You are not having any communication with the lady or any other thing. I don't know if it is uh, proper. So these are the two areas. I'm, uh, I'm when you were marrying her, did you go to the parents and requested to marry her? Or you just pick her in the city and... No, I took her to the parents. I paid all my dowry and You everything. will go back to the parents too and oh. explain why. You have not done them wickedness. This okay. is the reason why I'm dissociating from your daughter. Okay. Please don't be angry with me. This is for God's sake. You need to explain that because you can offend them. And if you offend them and they become angry and miss heaven, you are responsible. Okay. And two... Uh, you say, oh, I came back to where my past wife is. The woman I did restitution. How do you tell the people around you? Do you go from house to house to tell them that you have done restitution with her? Um, I told them some members... I of mean the your neighbors, your neighbors. The neighbors around the place. Do you go around to let them know that, see, I am in this house. I'm not doing anything here, oh. So don't, you people should not think that I'm doing something with this woman. Well, I'm just here now because I don't have accommodation. Have you been announcing like that around them? Uh, I've tried to tell a lot of people that. But how many people are left? I, I really cannot count. You, Maybe will over never, you will never finish telling the people. Yes. And everybody that comes across you will still believe you are still married together as long as you're in one house yes and uh, they don't have any problem except you come to be telling them that hey and myself and that woman were not together they will not believe you and then your record which is to glorify god is still in darkness the lord is not yet glorified okay thank, thank you, you sir praise the lord sir please my question is maybe in, a, in our chapter in where we are staying we don't have capable as in serious members of Horemo that will be taken as in you know in a chapter meeting you have secretary you have this one you have this one but the ones we have they are not to me I am not satisfied and I, you see um, some of them may be handling one, one thing or the other. You understand? But in attendance and uh, in how everything is going on, myself, I'm not satisfied. And maybe I am, somebody will be saying, have patience, exercise patience, all of them are kids, all of them are, please help us in this situation. How do we do it? Sir? How many people are there in the unit? Sir, uh, including the children. Sometimes we'll be up more than, let me say, up to 20. I'm just guessing, sir. And you don't see anybody mature to be given a function? Uh, we are, but we are very scanty. If they are not mature, don't force function on them. Leave them like that until you see maturity in their lives. Thank you, sir. Another one, sir, please, uh, is about my marriage. My husband, I've been passing a, a lot of things in his hand. So, but the one that happened recently, it's, it's not just, it happened this year. So the way he's going, he's under satanic torture. I can, how do I explain it? 
The devil is torturing him. His, the, um, his condition is making me to shed tears. But he's not understanding. So one day, uh, we are, he, he's raining fish pond in our house. So he told me to waste the water. He's coming. I now opened the tap. He went out. He went to a beer parlor. He stayed there till the water finished. The fish were beating themselves on the ground. They were, I called him. I, I called him. Called him. I don't know when I said, you don't know the devil is cheating you. So he now came back. That word I released. He came back. He said, he said, he said Satan is cheating me. Okay. You understand. You understand. So I, start, I tried to talk sense into him. I was telling him about Jesus. It's only Jesus that will save you in this your condition. So when we are saying, say, get away without your Jesus, I don't need it. If your Jesus is angry, he should change my story. He, in fact, so I now said you, uh, that you don't know the punishment that is awaiting you. So I, when I said that, he now grew angry with me. So he said from today, no more school fees. You will not pay the children's school fees again. From in fact, from, from today, today, no more what? He will not pay the children's school fees again. I should never tell him about the, my children's school fees. So, if, at times, if I say, please, the children's school fees, he will say, please, I have projects. I have something I'm doing. Don't. In fact, the children should drop. So, it has become a burden to me. The, it, it, it has become a real burden to I don't know how to. Maybe your case is longer. You will see your coordinator for proper explanation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God how you explained to our sister about this witchcraft matter. Because yesterday I was going home. So one sister said, Ah, you did not join the people that is cooking. I said, No, maybe they did not choose me. Maybe because this witchcraft matter is too much. They did not choose me for cooking food. So she started laughing. But now that you have explained to her on how we should do, I'm now blessed. I will not be thinking that if they did not choose me, I will not do it. Because I don't want people to suspect me that I come here to pollute everywhere. So I thank God for the explanation that you gave. Although I didn't understand you well, but since you are satisfied, it's okay. The Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Uh, honestly, if to say I have not been given a chance, I will not be happy to so. um, Having in the area of restitution, I want to ask questions. Then in the area of paying tight, two sections. In restitution, let me just say if someone maybe when I was in the world behaving like people in the world I stole somebody property let me just say money or I cheated on someone to the extent that I can't count how much is the money and now I have repented I have accepted Jesus and things are not going that right for me to go back and do restitution or I may go there the person will tell me pay in all this money and secondly, where I will get the person also is another problem. Because the person might, is in Meduguri, Gwaza, which, which there's nowhere someone can enter, talk less of go and do restitution to a Muslim man. How can I do with this one? Number two, I am working, my salary is 30,000. My tithe is supposed to be 3,000 naira every month. Then sometimes, before the salary will come, problem will come from different ways. In fact, I will be even boring, 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 boring. When the salary came, I have to pay the debt all. I'm afraid that if, if, if I die with these people money now, how am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? Let me just pay, 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 pay. At long last, the money will not be enough for me to even remove tight or paying transport to my office. I've been jumping my ties sometimes. So that thing is bothering me. How am I going to do it? Praise the Lord. Satan has won over you. As long as you are not faithful. All Satan wants is that don't be faithful. He can give you reasons. Otherwise, the first thing to do when you get your money, what should you do? You are not the first in this world. No man is the first in this world. 
your family as a married person it's not the first who is the first give god first then go and struggle with the others it's then you will receive the wisdom of god when you pray your prayer shall be answered god how do i do this god help me tell that other person to be patient i'm not going to be able to pay him this month god i need to treat this sickness please heal this sickness in my life god then you'll be getting him and a lot of those things that you would have used money you won't use money for them because of the care of god in your life but you have disappointed him that is supposed to help you how will you do it huh? when you have your vehicle in the house what does the vehicle need first to for you to be able to move around fuel when you got money and you didn't buy fuel what will you be doing now if you want to go somewhere you'll be trekking where the vehicle would have taken you very simply you can't because the money instead of buying fuel for your motorcycle vehicle you didn't do it so you suffer more that is exactly now you have restitution for somebody in madigori thank god holiness revival movement the lord is raising it up here and there pray for more expanse tell your coordinator we have a chapter leader in madigori who just describe the person they will go and look for him is that clear or else look for the phone number of the person ask her to communicate with him by phone and they will assist you is that okay thank you so wisdom is profitable to that well, this is the last question praise god mm -hmm. i have two questions the first one is about restitution where i was working before in lagos so i used to represent my hospital as in giving data that we get from the hospital to the local government so before i started it before they handed it over to me the person that was doing it before they used to give her a transport but that transport she don't used to finish it but this is the amount they normally give her so when i started they used to give me that same amount so but sometimes i don't finish it i don't finish the transport but this question keep bothering me that change that used to that used to be left from that money am i supposed to return it but i've been using it to ask the hospital this transport you are given to me am i supposed to bring back the balance at the end of the month it is a no because sometimes somebody will give you lift you may not need to pay transport but sir. so ask them if they say no then the money is your own if they say no you will give us the balance give them the balance but i'm not working there again i've left the place go and ask them hmm? that is restitution seek to ask them get their phone number get connection and still ask that organization okay so the second one is about a uh, divorce of a thing there is a sister i've been counseling i told her though she was divorced she has been divorced but she said it's her husband that said that he doesn't want again so i gave her some places in the bible that this is the place that condemned divorce but he keep on asking me i am not the one that said i don't want to marry the man again so as a and result what is, does she want and this she said no she's talking about remarrying i told her that remarrying oh. is no good so i'm confused when she asked me that question that this is 10 years what do i want her to do i'll be confused on what to answer what is the reason why god is saying when a person is separated he should not marry is because the two of them are one flesh that oneness cannot be separated as long as two of them are still alive whether it is the man that forced you out or you left the man by yourself two of you can never marry another person again is that okay let's rise up upon our feet and worship the lord thank the lord for the message for the lessons you have learned
The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I 
Jesus, I believe. 